News, Washington Deputy Managing Editor. Bill covered voting irregularities in Ohio in the mid-1990s. And Bill, I know there's so many stories, but Stuart the Cat, how do you vote? <laughs> Well, I, I, and I, I got to say this, I wrote a lead about that in the front page of The Plain Dealer. It is not clear whether Morris Feline Stewart is a Democrat, a fat cat Republican, or a fan of Ross Per O. I'm, I'm very that's ashamed. Your headline? That's a I'm, great headline. I'm very ashamed of that. Not as ashamed as Ohio should be for letting it happen. Well, and then we put it on the front page. That's what you call a groaner in the <laughs> business. That's a, we call that a groaner. But anyway, it doesn't surprise me now to hear about all of this voter fraud or alleged voter fraud going on in my home county of Cuyahoga. Well, let me just show where the viewers where Cuyahoga is, just so they have some idea. This is up in the urban area in Columbus. I'll draw it on uh, that. And that's a heavy Democratic area. Is that Cleveland, right? Cleveland, heavily Democratic, Cuyahoga County heavily democratic it's the one of the biggest urban centers in Ohio just like Columbus just like Cincinnati are also heavily democratic it's not until you get out to the rural areas like southwest Ohio uh, southeast Ohio where you get into the heavily Republican parts of the state right. but what we're talking about here though is is simply the, that's Cuyahoga where this order is yeah. where it's focused so what is it well actually the 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 court ruling that came down tonight by the federal judge applies to all of Ohio and let me just back up after the debacle of 2000 when we had the recon wars, there was a thing called the Help America Vote Act, which was passed in 2002, a federal law that was supposed to prevent all these voting problems. As a result of that, the states like Ohio are required to maintain a voter registration database, statewide voter registration database. And in Ohio, they're supposed to check this against the Bureau of Motor Vehicles records and the Social Security records so that you don't have bogus names in your voter so registration. So Stuart may be reg in one, but not in the other two, so Stuart's out. Stuart the cat. Exactly. So okay. you can't just have made-up names in this voter registration base because it has to match with the, somebody who getting a driver's license, somebody getting a social security card. What happened is uh, the Secretary of State, according to the federal judge, was not sufficiently cross-checking these names or even allowing the counties to get at the mismatches in their own county so that they could purge the voter rolls. Why not? Well, it says that it, according to the federal judge who made this ruling today, she, he says that they, you know they did a hearing, they went into chambers, and the Secretary of State said, look, we would need a few more days to work on our software to get this stop, thing. Stop, stop. A few more days. In this 2008 election, she's no, I mean, everybody's known about that for quite some time. It happens every four years. Well, and the deadline for challenging absentee ballots is a week from today. And one key uh, fact, the 65,000 ACORN registrations that have been pulled in over the last year in Ohio have all been fed directly into this database. So those ACORN names, many of which apparently are bogus, are in there and there's no way to cross-reference them and get them out of there. You know, I have no sympathy. As much as I respect people um, in office, I have no sympathy for any state who doesn't have this voting situation straightened out. It, I mean, anyone who is, was alive in 2000 has got to get it that, you know, that this is an issue. We've had a chance to do that. It was eight years ago. We had it and, four years and, ago. And, and, and in the mid-90s, I was writing stories for the Plain Dealers about, you know, cat registered to vote. We had people rigging vote counting computers in Cuyahoga County. I mean, the potential potential for fraud in Cuyahoga County Board of Elections cannot be overstated. And now that you've got this ACORN problem and the Secretary of State problem where they're not allowing these names to be purged, we, we got a recipe for a disaster. You in, know, I'm dying to talk to her again. I hope month. she'll come back tomorrow. She maybe not, but she says, I'm a lawyer, I'm a judge, you know, she's all these things. And you know, I, you know, I guess I sort of hold her to a higher standard that she's, followed, she's read the law. If she, maybe it's possible that maybe the federal court judge, the trial court judge is wrong in issuing you know, this temporary restraining yeah. order tonight. Maybe the judge is wrong, and maybe the Sixth Circuit will decide with her, but right now it's, it's, she's looking pretty bad. Well, and time is running out. We have a week, after a week passes, and, and I think October 25th, uh, you're allowed to open up the absentee ballots, and once you open up the absentee ballot and take the card out of the envelope, that's the last time you can trace that vote back to the person whose name is on it. After that, it becomes an anonymous ballot, and there's no way to disqualify which, it. Which is why the temporary restraining order is issued, because time is of the, time is of the it's essence. Got, it's got to be issued uh, right away, but I mean, it's a, it is extraordinarily distressing that we're even in this situation. Yeah, you got tens of thousands of potentially fraudulent voter registration names are in the Ohio database right now, and the question is, is there any way to get them out of there? You know what the other bad thing about it is that you know every person has a right to vote, one vote, and uh, the homeless have a right to vote. Everybody has a right to vote. You don't have a right to be told how to vote. I mean, no one should be doing that. But because that this Secretary of State is a Democrat, and because this was bought, brought by the Republican. Party, Party. It has all sort of the overtones as being, yeah. you know, as being politically motivated. Maybe it was or maybe it isn't, but bottom line is people have a right to vote and we have a right to the integrity of the system.